Jenny on the beat, boy. Welcome everybody at last. How are you doing? This is Jono Bidi with Night School. Now there's a little change here today. This is not where you're used to having Night School, right? Night School typically holds on my channel, the Jono Bidi channel. But today we're having Night School on YBB's channel. That's right. Today we're doing a crossover. It's not an ordinary Night School. A crossover is where two separate shows have some kind of a mix or some sort of collaboration and that's what this episode is all about so don't worry further episodes will happen on my channel but today's episode is happening here on ybb's channel so if you look below just under this video you'll see the name of the channel is yetunde bankole bernard make sure that you subscribe and you'll be getting all her videos from now on this is a series in her show called Deeper with YBB. And she has had fantastic guests, amazing episodes that you don't want to miss, all right? So I know that most of you here are already on her email list. A lot of you here are already on the email list. For those of you who are not on the email list, I'm going to share the link somewhere at the bottom of the screen as we proceed. Make sure you join so that you can get the entire series of videos that has been on the Deeper with YBB series all right guys who is excited to be here i can see the usual suspects here today my people great darling wisdom good to see you um john peter obaro joseph um ocean of life tv amazing people fantastic all right guys let's get right into the meat of things all right um but before we do that i want you guys to take the link that brought you here as usual take that link that brought you here share it out to your friends your family your neighbors, your enemies, your loved ones, your not so loved ones, your girlfriend, your ex-girlfriend, share it to everybody, bring them here, because it's about to be an amazing show, all right? Now, I'm sure you guys must have heard or read the copy that was used for promoting this show, and it was one that really resonated with a lot of us, especially those that came from Head Start Africa, and it's a topic of reinvention. And so what we know, most of us is personal development and so 10 ways to do this 10 ways to better do that right but when we're talking about radical self-reinvention we're talking about putting to death an old persona for some people it's not about improving that vehicle cannot be repaired it cannot be improved anymore it's something that has to die entirely and so what is that process i mean some of us here are religiously inclined and so we could resonate with the 
metaphors that I use there. Like even in Christianity, one of the, the, the core concepts of Christianity is the baptism experience is one of the core mysteries. And even the baptism experience involves going into the water, with, which signifies some sort of a death, right? And then you're submerged in the water and you're coming out and it's a resurrection as a new person. And all those metaphors are very powerful in our walk in life. And so what is that reinvention like? Um, YBB is someone that is most qualified to speak on this topic. She's someone who has traversed multiple different industries, but I think she's going to talk about that by herself. So if you're happy and you know with clap your hands, take the link that brought you here, get people in. We want to have a full house. All right, guys, good to see you. Good to see you. Tina's our favor. Good to see you. Thanks for bringing your soldiers over here. Dorcas Oluwalano. Good to see you. Shino Oladele. Good to have you on. All right, without further ado, I am going to bring on the YBB. YBB, it is a pleasure to have you on your own channel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. Hi, people. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, hi, Mr. BD. Uh, thank you for thank having me here. <laughs> thank you. I thank follow. you. <laughs> Everyone's okay. just going crazy. So excited. All right, guys. So Yay. today we're talking about um reinvention and mastery even though in my in my emails i focused more on the reinvention part um we'll talk about that soon but first of all this like i told them is a series with you this is the last installment of the series actually called deeper with ybb what is deeper with ybb why that name and i think that will set the tone for our conversation here tonight okay um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we're going to be as organic as we can be. So even though this is like, I know that your night school is very, you know, teaching, teaching inclined, but this is also night school meets deeper with YBB. I think that the, the major difference or what, what a deeper with YBB brings is just having these conversations with people that you typically talk to and, um, expanding it to go into the areas that you think about but don't necessarily talk about like you don't voice those things you know how sometimes you have some questions in your head and you're wondering am i crazy for even thinking about this thing does it make sense but these are the things that cause like transformations or these are the things that help you to stand always in your difference where you are not um you know seeing things on the surface you are not um, imagining and letting go of your imaginations. You're taking your imaginations into places and allowing them to roam. So that's what, you know, deeper with YBB really is. Um, I think that for me, you know, well, you are here, so I know you know what I'm talking about. Like I have the oddest conversations about the funniest things, like simple things. And then when you have these conversations with people that are, you know, people that are thinkers, you realize that your thinking becomes wisdom. You know, there's an interactive um, process that goes on when thinking just translates and it's like, oh, wow, I know. And this knowing makes me um, not just aware, but it makes me stand in a place of authority and influence because I know. And they come from these conversations with dynamic people. So, yeah, thank you for having me here tonight. <laughs> thank you for coming on. I'm not going to be in a hurry to get into reinvention because, um, I mean, we have been well acquainted for a while. And in that time, there are core concepts. Um, I wouldn't call them buzzwords because they are almost propri proprietary to you that I, I notice across your, your body of work. And one of them is a term that might be seen as pedestrian, but it's a way that you use it, and it's called showing up. It was even somewhere on the landing page for this series. How are you showing up in this world? And you mentioned that in conversations. I think that there is an angle to that term that, I, that people should not really take lightly. What do you mean by showing up? Why should people be concerned about how they are showing up. There's also another word that you use pretty frequently, and that is presence. 
perhaps your most favorite word. I don't know. I guess <laughs> presence, right? You always talk about that. And when you talk about presence, there's a gravitas to your mood. And, you know, you get into that, that, that altar where, where, you, so where you preach presence. So what is that? Showing up, presence. And let's, let's talk about how that can help us show up as our highest selves and where that leads concerning reinvention. Okay, thank you, John. I, I think that first of all, it is why are these things even important? Why are we, I mean, on a Sunday evening, what is this? Why are we having a conversation about a presence, about showing up, about why is it even important? Like people are doing other things, right? I think that the first thing really is understanding that, you know, um, every day, you know, you just have to make decisions on, on living, on you wake up in the morning and you have to make decisions to either get out of bed, you know, I have to do this, do that, do that. But where is it leading you to? What is the, what is the aim? Why are we even here? What was, what's the reason? What are we doing here? Um, and one thing I have found is that we are in this sphere, we are limited in time, meaning that, you know, you have so, so number, it doesn't matter how old, how rich, how poor, how unstable, how, you know, perfect, whatever it is that you are, we are limited in time. Meaning that when we rise, we each, all of us have, it looks like we have the same amount of time. It looks like we have the same things. <laughs> okay, but um, it is just that you need to realize that you can create more for yourself. Why? Why, why is it important? Um, John said something about showing up. And I think that for me, all of these things, why am I even doing all of the things that I'm doing? It started out, you know, years, years, years ago. And when I was, I mean, a few people know uh, my story of being the last born and my immediate being 11 years older than me. Uh, before him, 13 years older, 15 years older, 17 years older. So I was like, okay, the baby of the house. So, I mean, I never really had to make major decisions. I never really had to... Um, struggle for anything so all of my life has prepared me to be this person and i didn't know it then now transiting into my daily life you know just going i realized after time that i was probably introspecting before i knew what that was meaning that when people are seeing a certain thing i would just look and say ah, can't you see this other one and they're like hey so that was there i, I didn't know that was there and it was just very ordinary to me. And then moving forward, moving ahead, at some point, you know, as a young girl, you start to you start to question yourself. And so you start to do the things that everybody is doing. Okay, maybe this is how they're doing it. Maybe I'm being extreme. Maybe I'm being so you start to manage and you start to, you know, go along, like going with the Joneses, right? And then you get to a point where we are talking about now of reinvention and each one of us is at, at and this happens to us at different times where you get to a point where you just know that there is more you know there's some things that just become mundane to you you hear them and you're like eh, it doesn't really resonate with me but you know you're being gracious and flowing with certain things but reinvention happens when you can no longer you you just can no longer be this person you can no longer interact in this way you can no longer um, permit certain things in, you, in your life you can no longer have certain kinds of relationships you cannot no longer have some types of conversations some things just become mundane you're just like <laughs> at that point and this happens with every one of us at that point it is reinvention time it's time for you and what is reinvention is um reinvention is creating again like it is reconstructing it's like breaking things away and reconstituting like does, does that make sense do you understand what i'm saying like like recreating like like it never existed right and john asked about showing up see when you do not when you do not um show up in your authentic self you are tired you are you are frustrated, you are unfulfilled. 
look at it. Let's let's give a simple a simple example. So maybe somebody is saying something and you really do not agree. You don't agree with it. And the person keeps saying it and saying it. And you keep quiet. Do you know that by the time you leave that place, you will just know that there's something wrong with you. Something happened. You just be like, maybe when you leave, you can be like, ah, what's rubbish? Or ah, how did that, you know what happened? You were, drown, you were drowning at, at that point. You were, you were not there. You, you were not there. So showing up is not just showing up in a place. It's not branding. It's not bravado. It's not, it is being in your authentic energy. <laughs> it is being in your authentic energy, in your authentic thoughts, in your authentic way. It's you. It's just being. So I'm going to give you guys hmm, gist. John, I'm going to tell them this gist. So the Who's very gist? first time I met yours. <laughs> so, <laughs> you don't have my permission. Guys, first all, wait, first of all, before I go, I need to know. People need to tell me. Do you guys want to hear this gist? Well, I need to say well, why would they say no? Wait now. My people are the biggest approcos I've ever met. <laughs> They need to say yes if they want to hear this gist. And I'm talking about showing up, right? So I need to lead you into what it means. They are saying no. See, they are, they are saying no in the comments. They don't want to hear it. Ah, I can't see any yes. So yes, I need to see I'm, more. I'm like seeing, I can't really I'm seeing no. I'm seeing no everywhere. <laughs> okay, guys. So this gist, the first time that, you know, I met John Obiti, he was introduced to me by my very, my good friend, you know, someone who had said to me, ah, this guy, you need to meet him. You guys, you know, you get along. Apart from that, your work, his work, you guys would, you know, you would vibe. And I was like, who? You know, I don't, and this is typical me. I'm going to be like, eh, eh, who is that? I don't just allow people into my space because, you know, I'm very guarded. And then I met this guy and, you know, our conversations, even though it was work, like I wanted him to do some stuff for me. Um, I'd been hidden for many years, just in my space, doing my stuff. But they said to me, John Obidi is the person you need to talk to. He charged me an arm and a leg, by the way, mm, in dollars in those days. Like, <laughs> he charged me an arm and a leg and an extra foot. So we um, got talking. But I told him, I think a few a few uh, months after, and I said, it's because you showed up. That's why I was able to relate to you. So when showing up is not having airs, not being unnecessarily careful, is being vulnerable, is being open, is being in your authentic space, who you are, the things that you enjoy, um, your thought process, your your idiosyncrasies, like how you think, the things that you do, and Every time you have the opportunity to meet anybody, you must leave a part of you with them. Uh, just drop it. You must leave a part of you with such that you are unforgettable. I cannot meet someone. Like, you, you could never have come across me and, not, and somebody says, ah, do you know this thing? Why is ah, who's that? Ah, so, ah, I'm not really sure. Uh -uh. We are not... See, we're talking about reinvention tonight and we're talking about mastery and we're starting easy. And so this is us baby steps. And I'm taking these baby steps because I want you to, I want to know that you're following me. So John, I have spoken, I know that we're, we're, you just asked me one question and I yeah. have gone, but, but, you know, showing up really, that, that's what showing up means. I, I don't want to go into presence just yet because I, I think that presence okay. is, yeah, showing up goes into presence and, but, yeah, I, I think it's a bit too much right now. Or oh, do you guys want to hear it? There's something in there that uh, I picked up when you were speaking, and you mentioned authenticity. Yeah. You know, you know, there are some words that we use very commonly that I don't yeah. want to just assume means the same thing to everybody. Um, because I think the path that I have traveled in this space may not be the exact same as the path that you have traveled in this space. Like, mm. I came up in the trenches, but I'm not trying to. I'm not. I'm not trying, I'm, I'm not trying to boast about the trenches, but there are certain teachings that we come across mm. while trying to build relevance. Because at that stage, when you're nothing yet, you're nobody yet, and you're still trying mm. to find out what you are, what space you occupy, who you are, and so you read any and everything. 
You listen to any and everybody. And so there's mm. all sorts of things that people get to hear. Um, you hear that when you're shaking somebody's hand, um, you know, the person whose hand is on top is the one that is dominant, you know, and, you know, it's a lot of knowledge without wisdom, right? And mm. again, I'm, I'm not trying to slight anyone, you know, everyone starts yeah. from somewhere and then you start to refine your understanding as time goes on. Yeah. And then there's all kinds of things and especially the Lagos scene, um, I have a lot of love for the Lagos scene, right? But I'm, my people know I'm very brutally honest about these things. Um, <laughs> but there are some aspects of the Lagos scene that make me want to puke. Um, and so, but I get it. I get why they do those things. Because if you don't show up a certain way as a Nigerian, mm. it's, very, it's very likely that people would not take you seriously. But I think unconsciously, there becomes this layer of deception. Mm. And when that deception is brought to the masses, you can get away with it. But when that deception is brought to someone <laughs> who knows... I hear you. Yeah, it's, it starts to stink, right? And so yeah. there's a lot of people, people here who might not really know they are left from their right. It's not like they know that these things are, are putrid and they are doing them on purpose. They learned it somewhere and they're acting it out. How do people here define authenticity, mm. balance that out with sophistication? Mm. You know, this whole authenticity thing, you know, authenticity almost became, I mean, well, not even almost, it was a buzzword. I don't know if it still yeah. is. And it became, this is how to be authentic. Imagine authenticity but yeah. this is how to be authentic. <laughs> how to learn how to be authentic. How to learn to be authentic. Okay, so if you, are, if you want to be authentic, you have to do like this or do like that. Now, I think that the basic ingredient of authenticity is you. If you can, first of all, know that there's so many, um, there's so many ways to describe and so many meanings to form, but that at the heart of everything called authenticity is you and because i you know my my teaching is grounded in identity i always say that your authentic self comes from your journey and we i know that we've heard journey so many times and you know but journey is so when i started talking to you guys i started talking to you about how i was born where i was born or who you know what my life looked like and so for me you know, growing up with much older siblings made me wiser than regular people, right? And I almost wanted to run away from that because I felt it's not that deep now. Why do you always have to see the other side to what everybody is, is seeing? You know, so I ran. Meaning that when I was in uni, for instance, sometimes I'm having conversations and I thought they were very pedestrian. But I will just manage it. And I will laugh and, you know, feel among because it was good to, to you know, almost keep up with the Joneses. And, and that is a, a path that we have all walked. And so it's okay. There's no shame in wanting to keep up, in wanting to, to show, in wanting to be what they are saying it is. But the thing is that, first of all, the, you just, the way to find your way is to look at where you are coming from. And it's like baby steps. So what are the things that... I come naturally to me. Now, there, don't get it wrong with the skills you must learn. So I'm not saying that don't know how to speak properly, don't know what is etiquette in a place. And when I say etiquette, etiquette just simply means proper behavior. It's also respect or regard. So for instance, if you go to ha, the, where you meet the queen, you don't stretch out your hand. I mean, that's his etiquette. It's not that etiquette is not people think that etiquette is fork and knife <laughs> or it's how to eat <laughs> in public. No, etiquette is going into the Emir's palace knowing that you have to remove your shoes. That is etiquette. And not saying that, ah, ah me, we, 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 let's enter. No, you'll be in trouble. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about authenticity in the sense that who are you? What is unique about being you? And how does that matter? Simple. So if you know who are you, what is unique about being you, just always play to your strengths, always play to your uniqueness, and it will refine itself over time. So for instance, showing up for me and you, it was the fact that we talked about music, we talked about books and all those things. I'm not, I mean, I, I was such a book person, but I'm that person that likes to talk of, oh, so what did you read? Hey, so what now happened inside? So when you tell me, you know, that is my authentic self. You may think that 
So some people don't even really like li- reading books, but they will pretend like they, they like reading books because and they said that to be a knowledge person, you must love books. But you don't have to, honey. Sorry to bust your bubble, John. But if we're talking about being authentic, who are you? What is unique about being you? And what difference does that make? How does that make room for you in the world? So the things that come to you naturally, if you're a natural, somebody that likes to talk, somebody that likes to, you know, all you have to do is to find balance, but stay in your path and don't be afraid of your, you know, where you're coming from, where you're going. All of these things map and shape you into being your authentic self. So as you learn, as you go on your way, you know, you learn humility. That's another different kettle of fish, what humility is. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Every time I say one word, I want to go into another corner. But I'm, I'm writing it down because we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> there are many building blocks here. Hey, I think that I think I, I think that I think that even reinvention and mastery is a series on its own. But let's let's yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, we, yeah. we just have limited time. We have to yeah, you know, compress yeah, this, condense this, that. This yes, is what we're doing tonight. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, there, there's humility, there is contentment, there is graciousness, and there is honor. Yes. And yes. you know, in presence is honor. So people think that when you have presence is when you just do like this and I show up. Uh-uh. Presence is, you know, trusting yourself enough to know when to step back and when to step forward. So you enter a place. If the place is noisy, and when I say noise, guys, I, I, I'm sure that your people would understand. Everybody will understand what I'm saying, right? When I say noisy, I don't mean physical noise. I mean when people are showing themselves, you know, ah, we are the ones here. Hey, this, this, this. Presence is not stepping into that. Presence is stepping back. Give them their room. Allow them to, to play because, you, you know, you have to, there must be room for you to show up in that space. So the, the easiest way that I teach this is when I use, <laughs> when I use Jesus as a, as a person. Yeah, person of Jesus. And I say there's when Jesus comes with his presence, and there's when he's just present. Right? So Jesus as a figure, everybody knows who well, obviously is one of the most popular people or spiritual people that lived, right? And what about the action figures? Yeah, he, he was the guy he was something else. <laughs> That, that lived at, you know, and lived on earth and transit, transcended to another sphere, you know, where we don't know yet, right? So there are times when he was at maybe like parties or whatever, he was just present there. He didn't need to, you know, but when a demand is made, then he shows up, you know, then he comes with his presence, you know? And so I say that your presence is an office. You rise into it. It's an office. And you do not show that except there's a demand. So it's, 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 it's similar to saying don't cast your pearls before swine. It's not when they're saying, hey, they want to say, that's not the time for you. to. So that's why I'm, I'm saying explaining presence is, is in honor, is in soft trust, is in knowing when to step forward and when to step back. Yeah, my authentic self comes from my journey. John, you were saying something, were you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. Yes, I was. Um, I was um, writing down humility. And there's a number of things you said there. I think I put that on the screen. Yes, it was more the comfort. Thank you, more the comfort of putting these things up. Where you mentioned humility, graciousness, and honor, you know, in the same sentence. Yeah. And you mentioned some other things there. I think that's a great... A, a fundamental, and I'm saying this because of the people that I lead yeah. and teach yeah. continually. I'm intimately connected to where they are, their struggles, their aspirations, and even the struggles they have that they don't know they have. Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've, we've been on this journey for years now, about seven years, <laughs> like like play. And so I have realized that one of the key ingredients in self-reinvention is in revisiting the dictionary. (laughs) 
there are some words that we assume we know that we mm. honestly don't know. For example, so there's a reason I put this Modi Comfort's mm. comment up here. Humility, what does it mean? Versus what mm. were they taught it means? Mm. Some people think humility is shaking somebody with two hands and doing like this <laughs> when you're to their hand, right? And then, I think we should do dictionary definitions here. Right, I think, so. mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. I think There's so. also confidence. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying this with, the, with also a deep sense of humility and empathy. I assume I know what those words mean. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying this with, with a deep sense yeah. of humility and, and empathy because people come from different backgrounds, all right? So nobody could choose the, circ the circumstances of their birth or how they were yeah. raised yeah. and the programs that were imbued upon them, but we are here now, right? So I'm not trying to talk down on anyone, but let us all just see what applies and grow. So some people grew up in very repressed childhoods, mm. right? And so they grew up hearing things like, you know, no, they show yourself, no, they show yourself, you do they show yourself, right? And so if you are in class and you knew the right answer, you tended not to raise your hand because you'd be seen as a show off. And so <laughs> they've grown up so repressed. And so when they come to adulthood and they meet someone who never had that background, who had no concept of such repression, showing up as their authentic self, they don't know what to call that. And so instead of consulting the dictionary, they put the nearest denominator, which is what? Pride. <laughs> right. So I, this person said it's too proud. But what is actually happening is that the person mm. is not shrinking. You know, if they're funny people, they are being funny people. If they are, if they have a fantastic diction, they are showing up in that authentic self. If mm -hmm. they like to dress colorful, they are being authentic to their yeah. nature. But yeah. people who may not understand what it is to not live a repressed life might call that, that pride. And so that's why I said a great part of reinvention is in revisiting your dictionary definitions. <laughs> what is humility? What is pride? What is arrogance? What is confidence? I love another word you added there, graciousness, right? To be honest, let me say this now on, on primetime television, right? <laughs> JOTV. I think it was from you. <laughs> it was from you. I first paid attention to the word graciousness. I'm going to yeah. admit, I, I had a problem in that department of graciousness. I'll just say that. You, you, can, you, can, you cannot Yay! beat me. <laughs> you cannot beat me. I'm saying it now. Out here. This is a precious <laughs> moment, guys. You have no idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, okay. I'm going to admit that, right? So, I had an I had a an issue with graciousness, but it was in a conversation with you. I had never heard the word used with such seriousness. I mean, I've heard it, I've heard it in passing, but you made a big deal out of graciousness. Yeah. And it took me revisiting that word, understanding it, and seeing, okay, I think this is a core ingredient that needs to be a part of the edifice called jail yes. and so i began to relearn graciousness yeah. the next word there is honor i learned yeah. honor from ola kuleshorio okay yeah i said these are things that you just assume you know until you see it being expressed somewhere yeah so i remember when i used to go with him where he, he would go to churches to minister and to teach now i've been doing speaking on my level for quite a while or what I thought was speaking, right? <laughs> <laughs> what I thought was speaking. And so when, you know, I got close to Ola Kuleshorio and, you know, I used to accompany him to where he used to go to speak. And we even traveled to, to, to out of the country sometimes. And one thing I noticed whenever he would get on the stage, PK would, and those of you who are new to PK, PK is, you know, short form for Ola Kuleshorio, right? PK would spend the first 10 minutes praising the host, the person who invited him. He would, he would take that time praising the host 
if that was if it was a pastor, if the pastor's wife was there, PK would take extra measures to find out her name. Yeah. I was very close with him, so I, I was, you know, he would be like, please, what is her name? Find me her name. We'll find it out. We'll scribble it, pass it to him. We'll see. We'll, he'll look at it. Why is it in, before he's being called up? We'll look at it and he would memorize the name that he just got now, not just now, just now. Memorize the name. We'll, we'll, say, we'll, we'll, we'll say it to himself, mutter it to himself. Then when he gets on stage, hey! <laughs> <laughs> he will scatter it as if they know each other from, from somewhere. He would just start, and when he would mention her name, she would light up, and she would smile, she would blush. And the pastor himself, the host, he would just melt, and he would do such grandiose words, and he would reduce himself. He would say, thank you so much for enduring me. And I'm like, what the hell, man? <laughs> you and, know, and, you know, and this, well, you yeah, know that he can be, you, yeah. But you know why this he was, uses those words, though. This was mini me. I'm saying mini me now, in like standing <laughs> yeah, beside him. Yeah, for you. Yeah. Who, in my own office, I am used to such grandiose mannerisms. I yeah. show up in the most, like it's yeah. it's large. We know. We know. <laughs> it's large. It's fine. We know where we are. And we know. Right. But then, okay, being, 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 being around someone that I I really look up to and I respect. And seeing him perform that graciousness and honor, that took me to school. Yeah. It took me to school. There is no way I would have read that in a book that would have touched me. I had to see that play out mm. in that way. Can I explain that, though? <laughs> yes, please. Honor. Oh, so, Because yes. I, I just looked at the comments and somebody said, PK knows how to hype his post. And it looks like hype. But let me tell you, let me give you, that's why we're here tonight, guys. These are like nuggets that you take with you and that change your life. So honor um, is, is um, a way of you, like it, it's, it's stepping back to, to um, respect and sort of like acknowledge the other person's gifting or ability so that they can open up to you. So I always say this and I say that even in your friendships and your relationships, don't take them too much, like to, don't take them for granted such that you do not see the person's role or the person's gifting or ability. Because what happens is that everyone, especially when you are, when you become a conscious individual, when you know, when you are awakened to self and to purpose, you know, and, and life, right? The kind of people that you have around you, you should begin to look at them and search what about this person? Why are they in my life? And so when you find that thing, do not let go of it. You praise them because what happens is that they get into their office when you do that and they give, they open up to you. So when you say something like, oh no, and maybe like getting on stage and saying thank you for enduring me or whatever it is true because whatever at sometimes maybe he would go over two hours maybe everybody else has one 10 minutes by the time you know, because you have all not they have opened their loins they are they, they just give you and you find you know favor <laughs> favor grows and it comes from honor it's connected. That's what that thing is. It's not just, ah, let me hide you. Let me. I have some friends and I gravitate towards them more. They honor. And because they honor, you feel there's no, every one of us wants to be valued. We want to be respected. That's, our, that's the thing that, that cuts across every human being. You want to be, so you, you wonder why are some people, why do people just go towards this person? Because you know that in that place, you rise to your highest, your, your highest ideals. Guess what? The person that may even be, if they are among other people, they are dumb. But because you always tell them this, they rise because each one of us has abilities and giftings and all of that, each one of us. But most times it is because we have not mastered, it's because we have not, you know, that's why we don't know. But if somebody is giving you, being gracious and giving you honor, you rise into your own self, into your authority, and you begin to open your loins to them. That's what that thing is. 
simple. That's amazing. Um, I think that this is a very um, critical conversation, and I'm glad that I'm seeing the feedback that these conversations that we're having about even the redefinitions are so useful to people that are, are listening. Because again, I'll be open with you, YBB. You, you know, you. Um, I think this would be like this, maybe the second um, cross we're having with your audience and mine. <laughs> so you have a, a you know, quite a bit of experience with you know the the, the energy here. Um, is very important because it's a room where I'm still trying to teach something as basic as saying please and thank you does not reduce you. No. So you you see why I'm I'm harping on this and dwelling on it and almost drawing you know drawing it out extending it. We're still at the primary one level where we're saying please. And thank you does not reduce you. And the fact that somebody is saying please to you doesn't mean that they are begging you. It's basic etiquette. Many people watching this broadcast were not taught. And that's true. Mm. That's the truth. So moving from there and then redefining what humility means, what graciousness means, mm. what honor mm. means, and how that translates to presence and authenticity is mm. gold. It's, it's just, wow. I think the, the scales are falling off a lot of people's eyes. And I think it's also helpful too that I was also a, a little bit, I'm, I'm hardly vulnerable in my broadcast, but I think, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's helpful that I was a little bit vulnerable about a weakness that I had to, so that they understand that I'm not the almighty J.O. that is just yeah. giving you the Ten Commandments, right? I'm a human being yeah. myself that has been on this walk and is still on this yeah. walk and I'm still ever learning. And I think that everyone is um, learning so much from this. So we've done reinvention fundamentals <laughs> have we um, i don't know that we have okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right so now you have your own curriculum for reinvention um but i'm i'm juxtaposing that yeah. with a lot of the challenges i know that my audience has and which i have taught to some degree but i want to get your own spin on it now okay. there's a number of people here who they have seen a john obidi do this and they've thought you know i think i would like to do this too They've seen a Feladrote, they've seen a YBB, they've seen an Ola Kunle Shorin, um, and they've said, you know, this thing, I'm, I'm feeling this thing kindling within me. I want to do this as well. I want to start living a life of purpose. I want to start chasing my passions. I want to start deeply revisiting my journey so that I can find tools with which to help and potentially change my generation. But there's also a past they're coming from. And if you read the, you know, you guys, we read the email that I sent before this, I said something, I said, your memories are your enemy, yeah. right? There's a past they're coming from. And what is that past? Maybe back in secondary school or in university, you did not quite know what you wanted to do with your life. And so you just, not that you were a bad person, but you were just, you know, regular. Right? And so you did regular things with regular people. And now you are coming into this season of your life where you want to express these gifts. And social media is like the town hall. Social media is, the, is now the easiest, is the easiest way to find expression for these gifts. You can put out a tweet there, post on Facebook, come on YouTube and do a live video, put something out on Instagram. And of course, the, the TikTok that is just taking over right now. So but there's also the old crowd who people are having this psychological stage fright for. What are people going to say? Ah, no, be Chiamaka with followers, jump fans that year. I'm sorry, I'm bringing my. Oh my God! I'm bringing my colloquialism <laughs> into this. <laughs> oh my God, that's like, okay. I know. I know you are so prim and proper. I'm, I have to shake you I'm a little bit. Prim and proper. Like uh, that, my people are here. I have to. I have to ask the questions that satisfy them, <laughs> my constituency. <laughs> right? So, maybe Chair Maka, the followers of us that yeah, hey, she's now a talker. Ah, she's now doing motivational something. Uh, you know, all these words to yeah, just reduce you. the gravitas, you. the seriousness of what they're doing. And Chair Maka is a human being regardless of how much confidence she's trying to learn, 
or how much certainty she's trying to walk with she's a human being and these words get to her sometimes she would write something write something and that stage fright would come and she would delete it and she would maybe find courage to write one thing and somebody from from before will come and maybe put a laughing emoji in the comments yeah. and so it's like two steps forward five steps back two yeah. steps forward yeah. five steps back she is still stuck right there about to complete that reinvention process but people who have a past what yeah. are the mental strategies yeah. that they can use to push through that i have my own way but what is your way <laughs> i know that your way is bamboozled get them you know? <laughs> who are my, they? My, my, my way is fire and oh, brimstone, but damn. this is not my stage right now. Wow. This is your this is your stage. I, I'll let you take it away. <laughs> I know that's the way. You know, guys, the truth is, um, I know that we have a mixed audience tonight. And so I'm just going to try and speak to everyone that is here. And I think that one of the greatest things, and this is not a function of age, is not because you are, you are young that um, you have these challenges. I think that reinvention at any stage is scary at any stage and, and each one of us is at that place in different areas so even people that are transiting to become the chairman of of a board you feel like ah, who that knew me before that i was you know so it's the same is where as humans we have those experiences <laughs> Hi, <Chiamaka. laughs> okay no but you know what um this is it the thing is to first of all what is the message I think that we even have to we have to look at this. What is the message? What is your message? Remember that I said that at the heart of anything called authentic is you. So I think that a lot of us, you know, focus on the outside more than we focus on the inside. Because what happens is that if Chiamaka, now that's the name, if Chiamaka knows who Chiamaka is, it makes it easier. It makes it easier for Chiamaka to go back into her space and to pump herself up and to say this and that, and instead have empathy for the people who do not know. So what you show is graciousness. Forgive their ignorance. They don't know. It's okay. You know, but take your eyes off that and keep doing what you are doing. So let me give you a perfect example. I mean, Burner Boy, now we all know who Burner Boy is, right? But Burner Boy was Burner Boy before we knew who Burner Boy was. Meaning that he knew the message, right? Burner Boy's job was to work on Burner Boy believing that, you know what? I am the African giant. It took, that's where the job is. The job is not in looking out and wondering what John or YBB is going to say. The job is insane. I have to believe I am the African giant, right? And as they keep saying it, it's almost like you can't see because of the message. So it's first of all you articulating, knowing, understanding, mastering, recreating in your space, introspecting, dealing with those things in your own space first and showing the other people that do not know empathy. Like, hey, yeah, you don't know. Don't worry, you see because that's what happened when Bonaboy showed up. He had already shown up before we knew. He had already risen. I mean, there's something, there's one, uh, one, one of my soul letters that I know that a lot of people were buzzing about is when I, um, you guys should honestly go and watch the trilogy, um, Genius to the Kanye West story. I think you, everyone here needs to watch it. I, I don't know, Netflix had better pay me for this, but okay. Anyway, so this is you believing in your own genius, in your own message, and saying to yourself, I mean, guys, energy is real. It is. I would feel you. I would know. So even the ones that are turning up their noses, it's because they want, a, they want to be recognized. You know, they want to have... They want to have access to you. It's just that in a world that you are no longer a part of. So they would, it, 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 it's like um, everybody sees when you're emotional, right? So they want to have, I, I know him now. Is he not this? It's, it's, they're trying to identify with you. And it's okay. Feel for, sorry for them. Oh, that's really nice. That you're trying, you know, but you cannot take your eyes there 
And that's what we're talking about tonight. And that's where mastery is. It's hard. It's hard. But you see, you cannot. You have, you cannot. You cannot be looking on the outside. And I, I agree with you. See, if somebody is trolling or, you know, you just have to, you know how to do that, right? You cannot be gracious to everyone. That's true, right? So if they are in your space, like always saying something, there's a way to get rid of that. However, it cannot be that you would stifle yourself or, or you will hold back because somebody, there are always going to be people that would say this or that. But the work is really in you articulating your message and in you rising into your own self. Yeah, your own genius. I think that that's it. Awesome, awesome. Um, people are, you know, that said she received the, the soul letter about Kanye. Um, I see this is, someone said here, I have put a lot on hold because of this particular issue. Um, and wait, I think I saw another one somewhere. Yes, that was Didymus. He says that this is killing a lot of people today, yeah. myself included. And to be honest, it was one of the reasons I started Head Start Africa. At that time, it was called Smart Bcamp. Um, when I started Smart Bcamp, Facebook was a wasteland. It was, it was, it was the sewers. The only thing people used Facebook for back then was putting out jokes and crappy gist. And so I wanted to create some sort of oasis where people who had sense could feel comfortable. <laughs> yes, could feel comfortable sharing and being celebrated that they had sense. I was doing that on purpose. Yeah. And so one thing that was a challenge in the early days was people who were not used to rules. Because Facebook was, mm. it was, a, was a madhouse. Mark Zuckerberg needs to pay us that, are, that, that have Facebook communities because we actually sanitized, <laughs> we sanitized that place by creating these you know, silos, this Facebook silos, group. The first, yeah. group. the first Facebook group I knew that was used for something sensible was Victor Bassi's Facebook, Facebook group. That's, that was in 2015. It was called the Highly Paid Experts Network. And I actually paid Victor Bassi for a coaching session to teach me how to set up and administer a Facebook group. So that was how I started my Facebook group. But then I created one and I said, okay, this is going to be a place where if you put out content, you can be sure that nobody is going to troll you in this Facebook group. And the, and the trolls came. People that were used to trolling, they would come. <laughs> Back then, we're, we're still very few, like 300 members, a few thousand members. If someone insulted somebody in the comments, I was crazy. Take them out. Yeah. Now, now I take them out, but then I was very dramatic. Now you I was take them out. I was crazy the insult, make a post about it, and ask the person to apologize in the public view. You insulted them oh, yeah, in yeah, public. Yeah. That. That's fine. Apologize That's fine. in public. <laughs> There's, there's room for that. And at first, people were like shocked, like, is this guy for real? Can does he really have the liver <laughs> to talk to me like this? Like, nobody has seen anything like that before. But after I, I laid down the law for like the first year, and that became culture, people that could not post on their regular profiles would come to the group and post because they knew that there was law there. Nobody would come and show. Yeah. Even if you disagree, yeah. don't say, Oh, I disagree. No, you we don't disagree exactly. like that. There's a way you write. So, so, but, but, but then, you know, I mean, everybody can't just be finding expression alone on a Facebook group. The world is moving forward. You know, you've got to find expression on TikTok. It's moving really fast. You might need to find expression yeah. on, on Snapchat. You've got to break out at some point. You're going to create your own show, you know, come on on YouTube like this and have your own show. And what's going to happen when people, you know, from, from the village come into your comment section, you know? You know, when, um, the, you know, one of my, um, one of the causes of sadness for me early, early on was that my father passed when I was just beginning to rise. I was just coming up when he passed. And I remember one of the things, I remember the last time I, I met him alive, the last time I met him alive. He had just begun to hear of the things that I was doing and he was really happy. He was really happy because there was this mm -hmm. period of time where we were not in touch. We were not talking for a couple of years. And in his mind, whichever way I will turn out was a coin toss. Who knows who I was hanging, who knew who I was hanging out with, what I was doing. Nobody knew. It was just a coin toss. So when we reunited and reconnected and 
it was a good thing that I was doing. He was really happy. But he said something to me. He said, be careful. Don't let them see you. Oh, yeah, I understand. <laughs> you know, I was, I, I'm, I'm sharing this because there are people here who are right there where I was. Wow. And so Don't let them I was, see you? Yeah. And mm. I was caught in between that deep sense of understanding of what he meant mm. and what his intention was versus this path that I was crazily sold out on. I don't know what hypnotized me, mm. right? Mm. I just believed I had to do this. But here I was, the last time we met in the flesh. And he said he was really happy what I was doing. He was really, really happy. And he said, don't let them see you. I said, I don't know what to do. I, said, I told him, I, I don't know what to do. What's the worst that can happen? He said, be careful. I said, look, yeah. this. if they want to do what they want to do, let it happen. But this is have to do it. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, yeah. and, he, just kept, and he just kept quiet. It ended there. Yeah. yeah. But there are people here, too, who think or feel like there's a lid because of their backgrounds. Again, not everybody is privileged to be free of the load that they did not bring to this world. In laws, like you, we have women, for example, who are divorced and have this anxiety of maybe your husband's people seeing you doing something on social media. Right, I'm, 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 I'm calling out what people might be too ashamed to say publicly, but I know they are, yeah. they are going to do it, right? <laughs> and so they shrink. I know because some of them are yeah. my very good, they are very good customers. They buy courses that they, I know yeah. that they are not, good, they are not going to use this course because it's not about the best social media platform. There's something in there. There's a fear of being seen. Yeah. Yeah. So that my father's conversation where he said. Be careful. Don't let them see you. Yeah. There's a lot of people here who have that genuine fear of being seen. So you're yeah. like, you're like, I almost said yellow fever. <laughs> you're like a traffic <laughs> warden. <laughs> you're like, I just got what you meant. Okay. Yellow fever. <laughs> you're like a traffic warden. A traffic warden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, like the way a Nigerian traffic warden would do, you, you've got hands. And with one hand, you're you're, you're beckoning with the other hand you're pushing back so you are beckoning you know, and you're pushing back what do you say to these people who are just there they're, they're stuck you know this thing that you, i mean you just explained it fully um I, i'm not sure that i understood it to the extent that you have explained it now and this is how i always say it and i say that it, it seems that we we so when I started this conversation, I, I talked about what we have and it is time and how each one of us has time. We can expand our time or shorten or just do nothing, but there's nothing that you do every day when you rise, you wake up and before you look out the door is another day. So I started again, what is the message? <laughs> there's something that you said. You said that you don't know what was driving you, right? Right. That you just had to say to you know you know somebody who was precious to you and you said and who said whatever he said in love but also in the fear that he is projecting is, is, is what he had you know you may have the best intention but that is not your path and the truth is in the in the scheme of things you are the one that really sees it it was given to you. Right? right so a dream a vision a call is, is for one person it doesn't matter how we are husband wife mother daddy, daddy. a call is for one right right i want to share this i mean i didn't know i would share this because it's something that i i just had a conversation with somebody and you know this is how i have my conversations i'm read and i went back and forth and i and it's something that i'm going to share it um I know that a lot of you guys are maybe like Christians, and so this doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or a Muslim or you don't even believe in what I would say, of course, is you do have to believe in something higher than yourself. I mean, otherwise you'd be stuck. All right, so it was one guy and his name, I mean, this is stories that we read in scripture, and his name was Moses, and, you know, he really didn't want to do any of these things. So I'm using that example to explain what it is I want to explain. 
And he just knew that he had this call. He couldn't sleep. He couldn't eat. He couldn't do anything. He just had to do it. And he kept saying to the person that called him and said, guy, this supreme being, God, I, I can't do this thing. I don't, I can't speak. I can't, I can't do anything. I can't. And he said, oh, I will help you. I will do this. I will do that. I will. He said, every time God had said to him, go ahead, do this, do this. He found a reason not to. I mean, this is somebody that had done terrible things and he was afraid that, hey, I show up and I'm not standing in I am here to save after I had done such evil things in, in Egypt and things like that. And God had said, you know what? I will give you somebody to go with you who can speak. Now, the part that has tripped me and still tripping me and I've been reading about it is that what God said to him, watch this, he said, you will be, Aaron will be as your mouth your mouth is but you will be God to Aaron I don't know if you've ever seen that so let me I haven't seen that let me, let me tell you he said you will be God you will be you would he didn't say that he said like in the same sentence you know what I think it's Exodus Exodus 4 16 now it's a, it's a it's a scripture 416 and it was saying that you know i i will give you aaron and aaron will be your mouthpiece but you you will be god to aaron why am i saying this now <laughs> you will be god to some people you will be you will tell them what to do what to say according to your call now, let me explain this a little further. What is the probability of death? The probability of death, 100%, 10%. Maybe some people will know that. <laughs> what are you doing? You're pulling it up. 416. Yeah. You speak to people here and be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. Please, let's change. This is new international. Use King James. You receive okay. well. King James, new King James. This new, it has, it has, what's that? It? Give me. King James. New King James, right? No, King James or New King James, it's fine. Yeah, okay, I'm a New King James now. Okay, what does New King James say? It says that... Um, um, hold on, it's, uh, I'm pulling that up. It's still loading. Okay. Okay, there we are. Oh, it said you shall be to him as God. You will be yeah. to him. You are like God. You, when he sees you, he has seen God. <laughs> See, there are some things that can never, never, they will never happen here. God is not coming down, guys. All these things, all when we say, oh, I am connected to this, and every work that needs to be done on this earth is by human beings. This is a realm that was given to us as we are. You know, we cannot be, you know, we are spirit, mind, body, all of these things. We can only function in this realm. But you see, you need to understand that you have capacity to function as God in this realm. <laughs> when there is a call, so that's where I started off from. What is the message? It is as if, if you have not articulated that message, then you can be afraid. You can be wondering. See, when that message hits you, when it hits you, it is irrespective of what is happening. So what it is, is remember when I said, when I said started, is you cultivating this thing by yourself in your inner space and cultivate whatever it is that you have to do. I know that, you know, there's so much I can say, but I'm, I'm keeping it simple and compact here because we are on a live stream that will end in God knows how long. But there are methods and things that I can teach and I can show that make you transcend these things as hard as they are you are god in a capacity of your call you are god in that space <laughs> now the other thing when i said about death is that you know that you are not going the probability of death is a hundred percent you are not going to be here forever see let's stop deceiving ourselves what is it all about what is it all worth one day one day it will be all gone so it's for you realizing what is the urgency, what is the what is the cost of our lives, what is it, what is the cost of our lives, and when we become 
conscious that you see that I am drinking, that I am eating, that I am walking, that I am making friendships. What is the reason? It's because of the message. It's to become conscious of your message and see if you do not have a message, then, then there's no need to have this conversation. See, not everybody has been able to rise into their message because there's so many things you must let go of. You cannot be doing the things that they do. You cannot be seeing the things that they see, hearing the things that they hear, being in the company that they are in because you have a call. And in that call, you are God. So when we're saying small things, all these things, heavy as they are, <laughs> They are minute. Have you ever been in a place where you are so uncomfortable because you know you can do something and you, you know, you hesitate and hesitate and that thing, it troubles you that you did not do it if you don't do it. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been? It's the cost of our lives. That's all it is. And so whether it is, uh, I understand this thing, or I, you know, I'm not trying to trivialize the, the weight that it can be, but I'm trying to let you know that, see, we're talking about reinvention. You cannot stay in that spot. It is, it is too small. It is, it, 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 it's, it's too, ah, you cannot bother yourself with those sort of things. All you owe, I say, you know, all you owe these things is it, it, not, it, not your attention. It, it can't be your attention. How many things can you can you give attention to? Something will suffer. I think I've I've, <laughs> I've gone. Thank you. You know you have. I, I, you I, have. I, I've gone into it. I don't. I don't need to. <laughs> so I don't. I don't know if um, one hour is all we have, but I want to be respectful. No, 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 no. See, yeah, yeah, you are here. It's okay. Your show. Okay. You have one okay. hour. Okay. I'm done. With one hour. It's all your right. Show. So I will, I'm going to ask another question, but before then, I want to remind people that just tuned in here, in case you haven't noticed, that this here is not my channel. We're doing, this is called a crossover. We, we, we use that in, in movies and, and entertainment. It's a crossover between Night School with John Obidi and Deeper with YBB. So, you know, a lot of people from Night School are here, but this is YBB's channel. So if you look below, here you would see the name of the channel is Yetunde Bankole Bernard. Click the subscribe button so that you can be subscribed to this channel and you can receive future broadcasts that will come from this channel and also all the other videos in the Deeper with YBB series. Okay, and if you just came here directly, you did not subscribe to YBB's list, I'll put the link here again so you can subscribe and be a part of what's going on here with Deeper with YBB. Okay. Uh, second thing is, guys, if you are watching this and you are enjoying this, you know how we normally do it. Pepe your enemies. Amen? I want you to take, <laughs> oh to take, a, take a screenshot of what you are watching right now. Post it on your Instagram stories. Tag John OPD. Tag Identity Coach. Her Instagram handle. Hold on. Let me um, put it there. In okay. case you don't know, her Instagram handle is Identity. We do this as a culture. We always do this. I you saw some, your... a question. Don't let it go. Oh my God, I think it's gone. Okay, it was we'll one find question it. That I saw. All right. So you, you're going to tag identity coach and you tag John Obidi. Post it on Instagram story and say something you, are, you, are, you have learned from this broadcast. As a matter of fact, hype it, blow it out of proportion. Tell them on Instagram stories that we turn water into wine. Amen. All right. So <laughs> I want you to do that and then let's continue. Okay. So oh thus, thus far, um we've talked about we've said so much about reinvention and like i yeah. said i think re reinvention i think there should be something even called the reinvention series i'm just talking off the top of my head because it's a lot if you look at the Enjoy. questions that if you look at the questions that people are asking you know mm -hmm. they are giving life to a lot of the things that you're saying that oh my goodness this is yeah. me and because of where you are at in your journey yeah. you live these things as second nature it might not occur to you that this is like a whole meal to somebody else right mm. so there's just so much coming out of this um yeah but what we've talked about so far i would call it defense reinvention mm. is playing defense mastery i would yeah. say is playing offense so play defense yeah. important now you've got to go on offense mastery at this point we can't still be dealing with 
what will my husband's people say? Do you understand? That's right? what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, I'm saying. <laughs> I, I've got a mastery. You can't still be doing, you can't still be dealing with, oh, I, I can't quite speak because, you know, my parents never loved me, right? Not to downplay that, but yeah. that is what you handle under defense, under reinvention, all right? That is done, okay? But now we are going into mastery and the tools that make you effective. If I, if, if I may wax even Old Testament biblical, right? The tool, the tool that will make you a battle axe. <laughs> because Woo! let's go. <laughs> my people like such violent terms. Or va we say violent, <laughs> violent that's terms. That's a piece, Emmanuel. Right? Please don't be dizzy. Oh my God, that's so hilarious. I love, I love her. I'm like, right. how can you dizzy? So, I don't be dizzy. <laughs> right. So at this point. We are going on offense. What are the tools, you know, for for mastery, right? You are getting on stage, and it's not at that point you are dealing with your fear of public speaking, all right? It's yeah. at that point that you are trying to perfect your presentation. You are trying to master your sales pitch. At that point, you're not dealing with it's maybe oh, I'm afraid of selling. I'm afraid that if I sell, they will call me a fraud. No, you've done that in reinvention. That's all defense. Yeah. Mastery is where mastery is where the big boys play, and even the higher levels above mastery. So what can you say about mastery um, at this level, level for those who are ready to transcend all those excuses and all that weight, those who have climbed out of that now and they're ready to hit go? What can you tell us about mastery? You know, mastery is so broad. Like, you know, when you say mastery, what exactly are we even talking about? I think that, again, you are at the center. It is, first of all, managing or not not managing your own thought processes and knowing what to give life to and what to just douse and knowing what to say yes to and what to say no to. So one of the first things, you know, I know that we're talking about mastery, but it's always going to start with yourself. And as the, the work that I do, I always say is in the work of identity, right? So if you're talking about mastery, it's about self, first of all. I mean, what about me? What are... So reinvention, you know, that when, when you... Um, the email that you sent, and, you know, when you... I, I read some portions of it, and we had had this, hey, PC Manuel, let's have our private moment here. There's nobody else here but you and I. I am a fan too, just because. Thank you so much. Okay. All righty. <laughs> Back to what I was saying. Um, mastery. You know that there are some things that you do. So one of the things, you know, people that call themselves creatives or people that are multi-potentialites or multi-talented, we are the ones that, you know, you are almost, you are burdened. You are, you are, hmm, you have the conflicts and contradictions of your core. You know, just because you have so many things you can do, I found, and this is in one of the discussions I was having with, with one of my friends yesterday, I found that people that, you know, this is just this one thing that they can do. They will just focus on it and they will do it well. And then you, because you can do this, you can do that. You know about this and you know about that. You have, you know, there's so many things that you can do. It's, it, it can be, that can be your, like, that can be your, your greatest challenge. What do you do? It's hyper-focused. Hyper focus, and we're talking about mastery. At this time, what do I give attention to? The thing that you have decided to give attention to, please give attention to it. Just give attention to it. What? Why are we here and there and everywhere? And what happens is that a lot of times we think we're giving attention to a thing. No, we are picking up different things from different other people. We're not giving attention to it by ourselves. John, why are you smiling? This is why I'm smiling. Your smile, your smile is distracting. This is why I'm smiling. <laughs> Never! <laughs> Please, can you just... <laughs> no way! This person... Ah, he wants to go there with me. It's okay. Don't worry. Oh, Zioma. Hmm. It's you and I. Don't worry. I will sing for you. You, I will. Because I know you want it. I will sing for you. Promise. <laughs> for you. I didn't say for everybody. Okay. So, um, what are we talking about, guys? Are you guys here? I want to be sure that you are here. Let me see. Let me see your comments. Um, what did I just say now? Hyper-focus? 
hyper focus. Yeah. So a lot of times people, and this happens, I, I know this is this is where you are. So you have decided, that's simple matter. I've decided that now I just want to start, you know, um, I want to start a garden, right? I want to start a, a garden and I am cultivating this garden. And in my head, the first flowers that come to my head are lilies. But I, I just said, okay, what are people doing now? And I just decide to start checking. Ah, let me check in and check there. And I see roses all over the place. I was just about to say, ah, <laughs> well, it's looking like it's roses that I sell, you know. Let me just quickly do roses. That's our challenge. Most of us. See, mastery cannot come except you are in your space, in your authentic space, and you are focused, hyper focused, hyper. Like, do you know what it means, hyper? It's almost an ob obsession, almost like, what's wrong with you? You must hear things like, ah, what is it? You know, everything. So even when you want to binge on other things, don't forget yourself. You cannot, when you are introspecting, introspect with yourself. Don't introspect with things. Don't introspect with things that are similar because it will confuse you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, like you want to do something. You have never really done it before. Give yourself room to receive it because we receive these things. That's why I said there's a message. You receive them. You don't, you don't hustle for them. You don't run after them. You, they come it reminds me of one, of, of, of one thing I borrowed from your vocabulary. You said it just once and I caught it. You said, you don't take, you receive. Oh, yeah. And I said, mm, mommy, why be be? Don't want me there, please. Let me just put it there. I just... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have real people calling me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm done with that. No, you know, like when I say this, and what does it mean? You don't take, you receive. You are not hustling. You are not um, pressurized. You don't, you don't, you don't. There's this, I, I can't believe I'm going to, um, I, I can't believe I'm going to hide, drop a song, somebody's song here. But this um, new song, what's his name? Great Man Tack It. I think I should take it or tack it. I'm not sure that. Um, there's, I heard a line in the song, like two lines, and they were just identity lines for me. And it was like, me, I don't do forecasting, right? I, um, everything, everything I need, I, I maybe like I order. You know, I, I, I don't take, I receive. And when you are in your space, when you are, you know, in your space, when you are, when I say your space, I don't mean, I mean a physical space. So know that you must create time to, to create. <laughs> so you must have time where you are just thinking, meditating. And so don't, when we say meditating, meditating is not always with something. It's not necessarily always every time. You just say, ah, let me use the word. Let me use a book and meditate on what they are saying. Uh -uh. Meditating in your space where you are just allowing your mind to open you will receive in those moments it's it's given to you so how does it happen you take something a particular thing that you are thinking about maybe something you want to do something else, and take it and just breathe dream on it sleep with it think about it meditate on it just keep thinking everything that you are seeing around you see it in the light of that thing let me give you um yes and no <laughs> no and oh <laughs> okay so let me give you an example so for instance for me when i want to do something so maybe i want to um plan a party simple a party i don't tell anybody i'm not telling anybody first because i have not meditated i have not you know, I have not gained speed in my in my creativity. So you have to gain that speed by yourself because different things will be given to you for speed. They and those things are given to you in your private moment. When you receive those things, you know that they are yours. You are not supposed to be sharing it and telling people, ah, 
No, instead of doing that, do this. Uh -uh. When you have not used it, uh -uh. you you hold it because they were given to you so that you will have what first mover's advantage. I don't want to even. I, I, I don't want to derail your your train of thoughts. But please, so please just put a bookmark right there. But there's some some items in your vocabulary. You're just you're just using past. John is like you want to. We just. Yeah. Okay. That, those of I us mean, that know. How long are we, guys? Are you okay? <laughs> they're, they're okay. Is, you're not going. You're not going anywhere. What, what, nice what, what are you doing with your life? This nice. Nothing. Just stay. You're not going. You're not. You're not they're, they're, they'll be here. So, <laughs> I'm just catching them because I want them to, like, have the whole meal and get everything. Mm -hmm. Now, people who have heard you speak long form, they know these things, but I using certain terms here that need definition. You said I could not do anything with this thing yet because I had not yet received speed or I had not yet gained speed. That is pregnant on its own. <laughs> There's a different way you use it has not been given to you. Mm -hmm. Break those down. They need to Are you know. kidding? <laughs> yes. Are you kidding? Okay. No. Um see guys. Hmm. These are conversations that we have, you know, when I said deeper conversations. I, um, and so it's very important to the sort of people that you interact creatively with um, because you feed off each other. So when they say a thing, like I said, it translates from thinking to wisdom that sort of like changes your life and your cause and just makes you gain, you know, some certain advantage. So when I use words like... Um, Receive speed. given to you yeah. to given to you to receive speed is like you know sometimes and this is in like in your meditations or in your thought process you are planning to do something or something comes to you it's almost it's like it's novel right you know so you want to launch a book and you just feel like ah this book I should write this in front first. And you know that it's not like somebody told you that thing. You were in a quiet place when it came to you. So when those things come, those are things that are given to you for speed. You will hold them where in your left hand. <laughs> you will hold them in your left hand. And anyone that might, you know, anyone that has heard me talk about the theory of the left hand knows what that is. The theory of the left hand is that your left hand, most people, most of us are right-handed, right? Your left hand is not as, you know, you don't really do a lot of things with it. So when I say hold it in your left hand is that you will know that when it's in your left hand, you're not going to use it to crush your head. You're not going to use it to eat. It's going to be safe there in your private place. That's what I mean. In a safe spot. Until you use it. Now, those things, <laughs> those things you cannot sit on them because as it was coming to you know that it will come to other people too so those are the things that you are supposed to hold and give yourself see give yourself first movers advantage and run run with it do it have you ever been in a place or have you ever seen something and thought ah, and i was going to do this thing oh hey i this thing i knew this thing oh you know what you did when it came to you, you put it in your right hand and you used it to eat. That's what happened. You used it to eat or you just, you know, you did not honor, hey, you did not honor that wisdom, inner wisdom that was given to you for your own speed. What you did was you just made it general and it developed its own wings and flew because it was going to fly anyway. It was going to fly anyway, but you did not honor it now. You did not know his worth. Uh -huh. So he moved and he went ahead. That's what happened. So that's what I mean. But when you say something is given to you for your speed. Yeah? Did I explain that? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Please proceed. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? If it's passed in tongues. I love it. See, I love this audience. I always love this. Audience. Like, they are so, and this is why I know, guys, this is, I know we're joking, I know we're having a great time, but these things are real, guys. 
these things are real is hitting you because there is a call and you have to articulate that message and you have to run because we have started you know what how we are start, how we started this thing we're, we're having fun but it is the cost of our lives it's the cost of our lives you would hardly you will not be able to to rise you will not be able to do anything you will not be able to stand in your authority in your influence in your power if you are not picking up these things and gaining mastery of them yeah why bb um i don't know if you were done with that point um i want I'm to, done. I want to I'm let done you finish because okay, okay, cool. i had something else um and yeah. i'm only able to ask certain questions because of my proximity to your work right and so um i just think that this would be really valuable to a lot of um viewers here now in a conversation with pk um yeah. we were just randomly musing and we were wondering why it was mostly the caucasians that meant exploring to discover the world and why the majority of africans didn't see any need to do that and so we we came up upon our 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 theories and one of the theories that you know we we came upon was that perhaps you know here in africa we had good soil so there was food we had good weather so we just enjoyed having a merry time however the caucasian in their climate they were sort of endangered <laughs> because it, it was the ice age it was it was so cold and so they had to keep on migrating to find warmer temperatures so that pushed them and because of the threats to them at the time they had to evolve in a way that made them value cooperation and so to them in their cultures cooperation they place a huge premium on cooperation um team building mentoring the central point I'm bringing out here is people. And it's not something that anybody is taught when they are setting out on their journey. I mean, people hear people, yeah, but it's not harped upon as essential. Mm -hmm. You started out with a verse here about Moses being inadequate for the journey and him mm -hmm. having the gift of Aaron, but not just him having mm -hmm. the gift of Aaron, but I never saw this verse before that you brought here, but <laughs> the dynamic, even the dynamic was being defined. Yeah. And this is something I have noticed about you. It's not just about you being able to have people, but you are able to give specific offices to certain yeah. people in your life. So it's not just okay aaron will just go with you and accompany you no it's it was specific he shall be <laughs> your spokesman yeah he will be this and you will, he be, will be this for you and you will be this yeah. to him roles yeah. are defined and that guides yeah. that relationship and that also yeah. defines how much you are able to receive from that person and how that person is also able to receive from you. It's something I've, I've, I've witnessed you do um, with a lot of the crucial relationships around you. How can you guide viewers here tonight in this thing we call relationships? To be honest, when you compare the African to the Caucasian, we don't place as much of a premium on cooperation as the Caucasians mm -hmm. do. Right, so we have more of solopreneurs, and everybody wants to be CEO and be the top boss. Everyone to take, everybody wants to take the glory for their own success, and so on. But the the few people who have been reeducated, because reinvention requires reeducation. All right, dying to everything you thought you knew. You remember, we had yeah. to redefine many terms and many words, and so it was a part of our reeducation. And so give us that re-education on the gift of people and what that dynamic is supposed to look like. Wow, these are such um, important. Thank you so much. Um, before you go on, you, yeah, <laughs> before you go on, you, you said something earlier on where you said these things are given to you in regarding gifts. 
and ideas. You mentioned it earlier yeah. on, right? Remember? Yeah. Yeah. But you're, you, you, are the you, you are the first person I've seen use people in that sentence. You would yeah. say something like, this person was given to me. Yeah. When, when I first heard it, I'm like, why are you talking about people like, like they are objects? <laughs> Like, oh, this person was this person is my own. This person was given to me. This person was given to me. So there was just this specificity of the purpose of these relationships. Right. So I want to I want to just set the tone with that and you can take it from there. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you, J.O. Um, I honestly am having such a great time having this open conversation because sometimes you wonder why some certain people are a certain way or how they achieve certain things or how they are doing. And then, you know, we are go this is us really going into private moments and sharing these like conversations openly. Um, a lot of people that have closed door meetings, closed, they have deeper conversations with their tribe. And those are the things that form a, an advantage or a competitive advantage in the world space, right? And so these conversations, I'm, I'm truly grateful that, you know, I'm here tonight. Thank you. Okay, so one thing I'm going to first of all say is that, you know, I found over time that you do not make friends, you receive them. Um, and when I first realized that, you know, and, you know, um, how do, how, how do I know this? Is that you have so many people that can come into your life, so many people that can. But over time, when you start becoming conscious, you know, when you become awakened into your, your next self, your higher self, your most deserved self, you begin to look at the things around you. Like I said, remember, hyper focus. Everything in your life is working in a time. Everything is working for you, right? That's what those things mean. Every so nothing. That's where that's that's where we get rid of things like shame and guilt and all of those things. To know that all of those things are plugs in your own journey, and to use them on your path to your highest, best self to recall, right? So, friends, when you start realizing that there are some people that, you know, you get along with in a certain way, they do say, start paying extra attention to them. Start paying that. You know, those people, you don't, you didn't plan. You didn't really plan for them to be like that to you. That's how I know that you receive them. Because there are plugs in your journey and you can miss them. You can by just it is not just having people how well can you define their oh okay i thought that was a question because i yeah. saw a question mark mm, yeah. that was a question so you can miss them because you don't pay attention so for instance simple question why is this person friends with me why do they like me and why, why do I like this person? What is it about the person that makes me feel comfortable? Why is it this person that I discuss this sort of things with? I'm not that person. And when you start looking at it, you begin to realize, okay, it's just like when you name, wow, it's just like when you name children. When you give something a name, it becomes that thing that you have given it because that's your creative energy. You have the ability to call something and say, oh, table. Everything that exists in our lives now in our world came from somebody's head and somebody deciding to say this is what it is. So you have to identify what role these people play who they are to you. And when you are able, you have to find a name, have to define it so that it helps you to honor them in that office so that they can open their loins and give to you. You receive them in their, in their power, in their influence, in their authority, such that you have access to those things that they have access to. That's how to build allies and partnerships. So it's not just that you're making friends because, hey, we are all in the same industry. Fine, you can all be in the same industry. But what, what makes you gravitate towards 
person A and not person B. Note it. Because it can be the simplest thing because this person A always just does this thing. Ah, this person is my informant. Because this person B always just does says this thing. This person is my enabler. Because this person just and because you have identified who they are, you will honor them in that office. You will give them that, and they will be that to you because you have called them that. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So that's the the the, the way now getting into because we're talking about reinvention, masteries, and 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 keys to a radical self transformation. There are a few tools. Of course, we know I, I couldn't really break down time and what that means. Um, I couldn't really break down or I, there's so much in energy and spirituality. There's so much in so many things, but I'm going to go into, because we're talking about relationships, I'm going to go into what alignment, collaboration, and partnership really means. So... When you've identified all of these people, it's not everyone you can collaborate with or you can partner with and all of those things. Remember that because you receive them, you have to wait to receive them. The people that you need for a particular thing, you have to intentionally look out for them. Some, let, let me give you, I'm going to try and, uh, you know what, let me give you an example, simple, simple example. So I was, um, I, I don't know if, um, okay, I am an identity coach, I'm an image consultant, and I, I'm an identity coach to individuals and an image consultant to corporate organizations. Um, and then I also run this Recall for Men, it, it's a resource center for men aged 20 to 35. And I remember when I started out to call for men, you know, it was like, ah, why are you doing anything for men? And I realized that, you know, when I was growing up, I grew up with my older brothers. And so I was always around their friends. And then so I was comfortable with older men and, you know, men at that time and their thought process and how they, you know, so it, it, it was in my path, just to give you. I digress a little, it was in my past. And so when my brother died, my brother passed, my older brother, and you know, it was that pain that I sort of needed to translate into healing. And you know that every time that you want to translate pain, the best way is for it to become healing for other people so it can be healing for you. And so I was able to translate that pain into recall for men, which sort of like is healing for me. Now, we were having a conference and I was thinking, hey, I want this sort of person to come. I want this. I want, we want to have this um, masterclass in, was it music and mu getting into the music, music industry or the music business or something? And somebody had suggested one name to me. And I thought, mm. so the person suggested the name to me. And as he suggested the name, he just said, ah, you know what happened? I had my, it's like an, it's an inner voice, right? He just spoke to me and said, check you know it's just being awakened to knowing that all things are in your you know these things are in your path so every single thing matters so he just suggested this name to me and i just checked randomly online who is this person and i saw his face and that was it guys guess what happened so i was in at the time i was in the uk and my niece had said oh until let's go for a concert at the O2 Arena. Guys, O2 Arena, if you know O2 Arena, or if you have heard of O2 Arena, where there are concerts and things, how many thousands of people are at the O2, O2 Arena? And we had gone for this concert, hey, everybody, we had danced, was, you know, late, late, late at night, and we were about to go home. And so we were standing by the taxi stop because she had, she had um, ordered an Uber. So I was standing and there was a crowd, but you know, I just stood there. There was a crowd and across from me, you know, like just across from me, I just saw one face and I thought, ah, this face looks familiar. At, at that time, my head did not register what that, who that person was. I just thought the person looked familiar. So I said to myself, let me look at this person properly. And I said to myself, you know, I drew the person to myself. That's a different thing, energy. 
So I saw him from across and I and I stood there and drew him to myself and you know sort of like asked him to come towards me. There are ways to do these things and these things are real. And it's not juju, it's not the juju with this. No, it's not. So it's me just you know Maybe we, are, we have made you speak pigeon today. <laughs> <laughs> you, you we, have, speak, we have made you speak me today by force and by fire. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so this deal had just you know how when you are sometimes maybe you shut your eyes and somebody's looking at you. Don't you open your eyes and see the person? You know, you know what that thing is? Is that you do? Sometimes you know you just look like you just eyes are on you, so you turn. Or you, or you or you think of someone and, and, and they call your phone. And the person calls. Yeah. So that's it. It's very simple. It's, it's hyper-focused. That's all it is. So I saw him from across the room and I was just looking intently at him and he turned and looked at me. So I smiled. And then, for whatever reason, he started walking towards me. Guess what? It was that guy that they had suggested to me. I mean, let me say about that guy, Bizzle or Shikoy. I don't know if you guys know who Bizzle is. And I've never met him. I don't know him from anywhere. And I just saw him. And, you know, and he walked to at the Oto Arena, guys. What are the That's odds? What, I see, what, I see. what are the odds? At the concert. I didn't introduce, I didn't tell anybody, introduce me to this. Introduce, these things happen. See, you don't need to hustle or run a hustle skills. You receive these things. You receive them. Hyper focus. Stay in your own place. Do the things you're supposed to do, and they will come to you, right? So I, I think that I just sort of like explained something in in relationships, and I mixed it inside. But what I was going to say about collaboration is also, and this one is very interesting because I learned it. I've learned it over time, but it it um it came to to the fore. It came to me. Was it today or yesterday? From yesterday. And it came to me actively today is that, you know, sometimes when we, um, especially when we are our own people, and I've had to learn this as well. And it's something that a lot of people struggle with, especially a lot of people that are already, they feel like they're established. They feel like, oh, I have my audience or I have my job that I do or you know, I have my money that I make, or, you know, you know, you get what I'm saying. I already have this. And they say, this is, this is the year, or these are the seasons of collaborations. Why is it important? Why are those things important? Because sometimes, you know, I, again, I'm going to use scripture because that's what I'm familiar with. I can use so many other things, but also you guys, I know that you're familiar with that. When people are going to war, they don't, there's some type of wars you don't go alone what you do is to look in your you know arsenal and say hey john give me ten thousand men you know give me fifty thousand this you must have at the level of your call at wherever you are you must have that within a circle you must Otherwise, they are not working yet. So we're talking about the tools and the things that you need to do on your way to mastery, things that you need to learn, things that you need to have. You must have people that have those things. And, and those things are not necessarily... Right now, I know some of you are just thinking, ah, followers. <laughs> no, that's not what... It can be money. It can be wisdom. It can be... Um, um, what's it called now? somebody to bounce ideas off. It can be, you know, you must have all of those things. Now, when they give you those things, ha, this is the part that I've learned. When they give you those things, they're giving it to you from, from their, own, their own abundance, right? But it's not like it doesn't mean anything to them. Use it wisely, use it properly. Show them honor as you use it. Don't do anyhow. Don't do anyhow. Don't say, oh, okay, afterwards, no, I, say, I don't have my own. Eh, Shabi, you just gave me this. Oh, Shabi, you, you... There are things that you do that slow you down. You know, you go back five steps forward, 15 steps back, and it looks like, ah, but I've gained mastery in this thing. I had warmed up in this, you know, the 
the second thing is that that's one, you know, honor that thing. The second thing is that sometimes when you are coming together with somebody or on, on something, you need to understand energies to know that this person is more introverted, that person is more extroverted, or this person would rather do it like this, that person would rather do it like that. You guys have to find an equilibrium. Otherwise, it would not give you the effect it's supposed to give you. You guys must find. You cannot sit on your side of the room. That's what, I mean, look at it in the easiest way to explain that to you guys is in marriage. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of marriages don't work. Because people want to be themselves fully in a place where we are supposed to defer to each other. You cannot be your, when you want to be yourself in a place, know that that place is just for you. Know that you had a king and you are a king and you want to be the only king. You cannot. That's what messes things up. So sometimes, and this is even in things like arguments or things like, you have to, you know, it, it doesn't make you less of a person. But to, to be able to achieve the, the reason, you know, that there's to come together to chase 10,000. But, you know, how can two chase 10,000? But, you know, the same two, sometimes you, you have chased 2,000 and you think, hey, we have done it. No, you could have done it better. You, you know, you didn't, you didn't maximize it. It's just like people saying things like opportunity. And I think I'm going to end with this here. I'm going to end with this particular one and have you take any other questions and everything. Is opportunity. And when people say things like, oh, you can always get another opportunity. Fine, you can. But you are your own... How do I say this without... You have authority. You, you, things don't just happen to you. Things are, you, you have authority. You, you can... You can in this field, in this space where you can see, when you, where you can, your, your senses are at work, it's not things that are, you can't control. Those are the ones that you receive that come to you, things that you can control. Let me give you an example. There was this lady, a very, a true story, and she was getting married. This is the African setting, so you know, and, and this is an African setting, so, so you understand what I'm saying. And, you know, they were dating, fantastic couple, everybody loved them. They seemed like the next best thing, you know, dated for maybe about five years. I mean, and then they were getting married. And it was the so in the Yoruba um, setting, you first of all do something called momimwe, and that is like your family knows my family introduction. And then at that momimwe, what happens is that they take the immediate family members. So it's not the, the um, engagement so that plenty of people call. And so it's, it's when you guys have said, okay, we're ready to get married. Let's come meet our family. And so the, um, the groom comes with his immediate, maybe his auntie, like your mom's parents, you know, immediate family, like your mom's people, your father's people, and they come in. So it's a very close-knit family thing that you, in, in, in the traditional marriage of Yoruba and what had happened the mommy moi was over guys <laughs> they had finished everything so it was just maybe like mom the guy's mom the guy the lady usually it's in the lady's house so the bride to be and then his aunties were still there still had, people were talking and then I think they decided talking about color of the day for wedding whether it's a uh, Purple or lilac or something, and then the mom was not talking to the boy to her son and saying, Hey, so lilac, hey, this, whatever, we're going to do this and whatever. And apparently, before then, the husband and the wife to be had had a conversation, and she had said she didn't want the family, the groom's family, to wear that color, she wanted a different color. And they sat there, and the mom was saying, Hey, tell me, answer this and this. So she was looking at that guy. I was trying to wink at him, looking at him, yeah, say something, you know, like winking, 
like, no, we're already discussing. You know, she was trying to catch his attention. And for whatever reason, he didn't look that way. Or he looked at her and didn't really say anything. Can you guys guess what happened? <laughs> Please, I, I actually want to hear, because I know you're listening to this gist. Please, I want the presentations. What do you think happened? Let me see. You. Let me see if I can even guess what happened there. <laughs> what am I going with this story? <laughs> our, tele, our Telemundo audience, tell us what happened. We're, we're yeah, following so this tel telenovela. <laughs> so, yeah, before they, so what now happened, bro? Because we're looking at him, we're looking at Sa, we're looking at mommy, looking at eh, eh. So, what now happened? What's the end? The married end. Ah, how did the married end? The lady called it off. <laughs> <laughs> they broke it off. He spoke up. Like she ending the story with violence. What can we say? Casala bust. <laughs> Guys, Casala bust too. Because introduction have ended. The lady, guess what? Superwoman. You are a superwoman. She just exploded. What rubbish? What rubbish? I've been telling you this thing. I was winking at you. You did not look at me. This and this, just such a mommy's boy. This oh, and this. Shoot. This is how you're going. Guys. So, like, She just went off. I mean, she was crying, you know, because like, I'm so upset. Why do you keep doing it? Crying because, you know, showing all of the emotion. Like, this is such an emotional thing, guys. You know, I'm so upset about this and this. So, you know, she went. Her aunt, everybody, I went outside. Went to come her down. Oh, don't be upset. This, this, this. The mother, Yoruba woman, called her son aside and said, over my dead body. Here. Yeah. So, guys, you are right. Everything scattered. I'm talking about opportunity. I'm talking about them. Sometimes things happen to us. We blame it on devil. Oh, he is the devil. <laughs> Some things happen to us. You say, another one will come. Hmm. The closer, the, 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 the more to whom much is given, much is expected. The more aware you become, the more in tune with your call you become. There are some mistakes you cannot make. You will never, you will not enter that promise. Like, ah, I'm sorry, it was a mistake. It's all right. I forgive you. But you see that place that you're supposed to go. You're not going there. It's not, you know, it's no war because there are principles. There are some things that cannot be heard amongst you. <laughs> they just cannot be. Like, how can you not be able to control your anger in that type of place? Why? So you say, eh, I will make it up. Ah, I was supposed to do this thing yesterday. But this is how I do. This by... And you can actually... Guess what? It can work, oh. But you see, it becomes thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. It's like when you give somebody a first chance, second chance, third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance. It's not like you would not still be friends, though. But there are just some certain things that the person will not give you again. And it's okay. Abby? Somebody say, well, I look like bicycle. <laughs> you see, sometimes we say some things you know it's easy for us because of where we are but if you are in a particular situation that and it's different for each one of us it's different for each one of us so maybe sometimes i'm talking about the, the opportunities of your life and some certain things that you're supposed to have gotten some things that you're supposed to have gained some things that you know those sorts of things and it is you it is you you are the cause you are the one no you are the one you slept on it you did you slept on it, you you misbehaved on it, you 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 were ruthless on it, you were you were unkind on it, you were you were bashful on it, you were you, you were slow on it, you were you were foolish on it, you were silly on it, you were yes, you were all of those things. Thank you guys. Okay. 
um, I want to end it on this note. I wanted to ask another question, but that question is going to change the energy. And I like where this energy landed. Uh, someone said something in the comments and said, uh, this is becoming scary. I saw it. I think that was, yeah. Yeah, you know. And, I, and I, I like the angle you took because on social media these days, everyone knows the feel-good buttons. So everyone yeah. can tell you, oh, um, you, are, you are more than enough. There's this, you are enough, you are enough, you are enough. But that is not always true. Sometimes you are crazy. You are, you are terribly yeah, inadequate. You are terribly you are. inadequate. And, and you need to know that so that you can work on yourself. And so... I think that a lot of times we need to hear these things, and uh, it's one of the, I see you. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I I rate I rate Bible stories a lot because they they offer some sort of balanced perspective. One side of things can be motivational; you are more than a conqueror, X Y Z. The other side of it shows you that our behaviors have consequences. Oh yeah, and that's just and that's just life. Um, like what you said, the story you shared here, where people say, I mean, it, social media is crazy. I mean, <laughs> and when you say that most people that consume all of this content don't have critical thinking skills, they just eat all this garbage from the sewers. So yet people say that, oh, if this friend does not vibe with you, fire this one, fire that one. You know, if they yeah. if they let if they let you go, another one will come. You know, and the and, and I'm glad this is deeper. We're, we're going deeper with White Beat. And yes, another one might come, but there were certain things that that relationship was yeah. supposed to have brought in that season yeah. that you will not have. There is a particular velocity or speed that that particular person or situation should and could have aided you with that you have lost and let go of uh, because of this oh another one will come i can always make it up tomorrow i can always make it up with another person i'm still young i can still do it this way and that way and, <laughs> yeah i would agree with you know so james uh, that yeah this is becoming scary i actually want to know what the person means by this is becoming scary like how, how does that <laughs> consequences how does that mean? consequences i mean it's, it's, it's not every day people come on are we taking any public... questions we should take questions john it's not every day people come on public platforms to talk about consequences you've got to realize that this is 2022 nobody's allowed to make people feel bad remember <laughs> <laughs> this is 2022 you're supposed to only say good things no consequences right that's the age you're living in so when you tell people that look your behavior has consequences it shakes them they're like oh wow i've not heard this before yeah even, even in church these days you know hardly do we hear consequences um let me see oh so somebody has woken up to the gospel of ybb <laughs> KG, Hi, KG. good to have you good Hi, to have KG. you on was... on the ybb show hello shakira because why we called your name i want to yeah. spotlight you. <laughs> shakira, shakira shakira sends me the most amazing emails they are long and i love them i read wow. every mail that is sent to me she sends me the most Quirky, amazing mails. i laugh i topple over so i'm so happy to have you here shakira Awesome, awesome, <laughs> awesome. Okay, so as a matter of fact, let me just end with this question. Have any, yeah. I yeah. wanted to I have this question. I wanted to add. It's not only a question, but something that you know, a part of your package that I know that would be valuable to, to people here. And um that is regarding magnetism. Hey. <laughs> And I know that there's something, hey. you, you know, there's something you have around magnetism, but um, the first time I heard magnetism was from, um, I think it was Napoleon Hill, but he did not really expatiate on it. So I only heard it in passing. Um, but then the next time I heard of magnetism was from you. And not just hearing it from you, but I think from you, you were the first time I saw it being practiced right mm -hmm. uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say practiced because a magnet does not intentionally attract it mm -hmm. just is yeah by its nature by, being. by just yeah. being 
right? And that's one of your buzzwords too, being, by being, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by just being, or as we both say, existing, yeah. by merely existing, yeah? But in your, in your words, by well, being. not existing for me is living, though. Yes, so yes. Being, you know, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> by, merely, by merely being, you just attract certain things. And for you, I've seen that mag magnetism at play where it attracts certain kinds of people that in your words are given to you for speed or certain resources are given to you for speed. Now, let me tell you something about you know, how people might see you. When people see someone like you, the way you talk, maybe your environment, the way you appear, <laughs> it's very easy for people to make up a background story for you on your behalf without your consent. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it happens all the time. Right, and I so they might it. say, yeah. So they might say things to just let me not say justify, but to rationalize. Let me say, rationalize the things in your life that appear aspirational. They might chalk it up to privilege or education, or but and there might be some merits to that, debatable. But there are the intangibles that cannot be taught in in the university. The intangibles that you cannot read in a book. If we are not having this conversation here tonight and mentioning magnetism, it's possible that most people would have gone their whole lives never knowing that this thing exists. Mm -hmm. And it is called <laughs> magnetism. And I don't want to define it based on my layman's understanding. I want to defer to you. Um, I know that you have a program named after that called magnetism we'll go into that later but let us know what magnetism later. is later <laughs> well after this just after this right but let, let, let us know what magnetism is and how it plays into one of the tools that we must have on our journey to mastery okay um thank you thank you thank you thank you guys it's been an, an amazing amazing audience um very interactive very present i love it love it love it thank you jay oh so magnetism let me just say quickly first of all guys i am so tonight i am opening up um my wait list for my course it's called magnetism 10x um and i think that the most important or one of the most important things about this particular course is because it comes with a certification and the certification is MGX certified and what is that is the ability to gain competitive advantage with the power of your personality and your inner wisdom um so I mean people have asked me why Vivi how can you have a certification and I said because I have been gifted to certify what does that mean? I have walked this all of my life has prepared me to be who I am today. All of these things that you said, they may be privileges, but they were given to me on my path. Because if I am not who I am, if I wasn't given all of these giftings and abilities, I would not be able to answer the call to be who I am right now. And so magnetism is really about the advantage just being and being able to draw all of those things for your journey so when we started out all of these things when we started talking what is the end goal what is it about what is, is the cost of your life that's all how do you thrive in this sphere what are the tools that you must have? Magnetism is beyond wit. It's beyond charm. It's beyond the branding. Yeah. yeah. It is the ability to gain an advantage, not just an advantage, competitive, meaning that in everything and in everywhere, you gain the advantage just by being there. And when I say being there, it's not being there. It's being, you know, being in your authority your authenticity just by being there everything that you need comes to you and so that's what magnetism 10x is is launching officially in two weeks 
just before we launch that weekend, we're having a an immersion. That's what it is. It's called the immersion. Um, hi, Kitty. She's so pretty. Oh my god. You distracted me just now. <laughs> you see, magnetism, guys. <laughs> you know, it's so many things together. It is you um, being the, the, you know, the um, owning your own beauty and influencing the, the perception of it. Meaning that how do people perceive me? You own the beauty, right? But you also influence their perception. So, you know, like, what do you see? You see what I show you to see. So I will, I will script it, right? And you will see what I have told you to see. And so everything that is yours, you are positioned for them to hear you, for them to see you, and for them to come towards you. I think that that's pretty much what magnetism is. And I'm so excited to have shared that for the first time here. So. Awesome. <laughs> Guys, here's the, the URL right there on the screen. So go to yetundebernard.com forward slash waitlist and get on the waitlist for magnetism. Yes, the magnetic Eketi is gushing <laughs> in the comments. No, there you go. See what I'm saying now. Like, come on. She, she magnetized you, you, you. Yeah. She magnetized you. Yeah. you. Yeah, it, it's so easy. These things are easy, actually. I mean, it, why did she have to put that nice picture there? But, but uh, she did. I, I, now, why did she faint in italic and not just regular? You do understand? Yes, yeah, she did. Yeah, so I will remember. Written in italic, so that was very memorable, Aketi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so guys, get on the Magnetism 10X waitlist, and you will be certified by none other than the identity coach herself. Why BB? Head on over now, not later, to yetundebernard.com forward slash waitlist and get on that waitlist so that as soon as it launches, you will be the first to know and enroll and get certified. I'm, I'm, also, I'm laughing guys, at somebody. Somebody said it's like wizardry in JO's voice. See your own <laughs> language, wizardry. Like, who's this? <laughs> Me. <laughs> Me. <laughs> It has to carry the gym gym. That's my own magnetism. Yes. Right? That's that gym gym. <laughs> oh my that's goodness. There are some words that you hear outside and be like, this sounds like J.O. You yeah. call me to give it from J.O. Okay. Also, guys, this has been the last installment in a series called Deeper with YBB. YBB has had the most amazing guests so far. Uh, we've had um, we've had um, um, uh, Shola Adeshaki. We've had uh, Toyo C. Toyo C. Etim Etiyong. Kate Henshaw, Skooky, and Tolu Michaels. Amazing. And uh, this is the last installment. So they have, there has been this entire series. And if you guys would like to catch every single episode, you need to subscribe to the deeper mailing list. So that is deeper with YBB. So go to this URL on the screen is get to the slash deeper and you'll get into that list and you're going to get access to all the videos. This is, this is the last one. Is this not the only thing that there is to deeper? This is just the last one. You'll get the entire series. So if you missed all those ones, you came late to this one, you're going to get everything for free on demand. All right, and you also get into YBB's list. So that's the URL there. So it doesn't leave, take a screenshot so that you can take this away with you so that I can wipe the board, amen? Also wipe the board, can I wipe it? All right, all right, now <laughs> let's go right back to magnetism. Look up the URL there. It is yetundebernard.com forward slash waitlist. Get on the waitlist for the magnetism 10X program, all right? Take a screenshot so you can keep that. Keep that to the side. Okay. Okay. Now, if you have not, do not procrastinate. Follow Identity Coach on Instagram. Follow on Instagram. Do not procrastinate. All right. Don't put your hand on the plow and look back. I keep forgetting that this is not my show. 
This is why. Yeah, it's, so, it's your show. It's okay. My, it's okay. Like, my, it's not, it's I'm on your YouTube. With you. I'm on your. I'm on your YouTube channel, so I'm trying to be respectful of the platform. <laughs> on my own, I would just. Uh, but don't put your hand on the plow and look back. Ah uh, no, no, know? please don't say money. No, 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 don't try this, <laughs> guys. No, okay. no, I'm not having it. No, she said my first time listening to Daddy, Joe, you know, and Mommy. Mm -mm, why mommy, you why be me? Mommy, no why be me? Mommy, why be me? We are loyal to your government. Be <laughs> loyal, that's okay. But we are not. Okay. No, we are not doing Mommy here. Okay. No, thank you so much. All right, so Somebody follow her on something. Instagram. And do not forget, please, subscribe to this channel. Notice this is not my channel. I know you may be subscribed to mine already. This is YBB's channel. Subscribe to this channel. Very important. You were saying something about something in the comments. I just thought I saw it. You know, somebody say, how would he want it? Uh, I, I, yeah. I'm not sure. I saw something like questions. Oh, wow. Are we still taking questions? I think we should Stay be old. done. I want to release everybody. We we, we are yeah, we've done two hours, two hours and ten minutes. So, um, guys, you know, again, this is not the last. Don't worry. Why, baby? Do you still do your town halls, or what else do you do that they can look forward to? Because if if I start getting questions here, we're going to be here for another hour. I can guarantee. No. So, no. how else can we connect with you? We, we this can't just be a one-off show. Are you going to be showing up on YouTube where people can come and see something to, that's making me listen to? I know what you are seeing exactly. <laughs> where can we come and be listening to Momiwa to be answering yes, yes. us and be giving us magnetism? Oh my god, I am completely like you, you cracked me the hell up. <laughs> so, talk to your children. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, Ozzy, mm, don't worry now. In our private corner, I promise. I'm serious. I will send you something. I'll send you a voice note. You want that? So get to me. Send me a message wherever you find me. I'll send you a voice note, okay? okay. Yeah. So, so talking um, about voice notes, you do send voice notes to your Telegram channel now, don't you? Yeah, I do. Awesome. I, I will do awesome. more of that. You know, I send voice notes there. So okay. yeah, I, I will so, do more of that as, as we progress. I will I will so guys, do more if, of that. If you if you get on this list, so that's I, I want to get you guys on the telegram channel as well. If you get on this, if you follow this URL on the thing yeah, after in. signing up, you would see the link to join the telegram channel. And then you know you'll be able to get all, all of that there. Somebody's so been following asking the question. Yes. This is just been following the will there be a task episode? I have oh, more than awesome. thank you, thank you so much for saying that, Glory. I have more than a task sheet. I have something like a work sheet, you know, it's more than a task sheet. It's 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 fuller because um we're going to be you know, like I said, there will be a an immersive seminar on the twenty eighth, which is when um magnetism 10x launches officially. So details, once you get on the, you know, and you're on the um, deeper, um, deeper list, list on, yeah, on the wait list, you would get that. I'm going to, you know, there's so much in here. I'm trying to compress the information so you're not overwhelmed. But thank you for asking. This one is different. So it's not a task. Sheet. It's going to be a bit more than that because I'm taking it the whole magnetism 10x way. So, which is, what is this? Why is this necessary? What do I need to do to prepare? You know, that's what it is. Um, that's that sheet. So it's not a task sheet, it's a bit more than that. Thank you, Glory, for asking. Awesome. So guys, we are going to call it a night. Please uh, follow YBB on IG. It is at Identity Coach. Um, make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel. That is YBB's official YouTube channel. Make sure that you join the waitlist to Magnetism 10X. That is the URL right there. And make sure you join the Deeper with YBB email list. And you'll be getting all her, email, all her emails. There's this email series that she sends out every Sunday. It's called YBB's Soul Letters. They're absolutely amazing. You have to receive them. Those are like energizers for your new week. All right? So every Sunday, uh, they go to that through this email list. Guys, what do you have to say to YBB after today's broadcast? I want you guys to put a lot of clapping 
emojis in the comments, as is our custom, and we are going to hear from here. So put the clapping emojis, put the clapping emojis, a standing ovation. YBB, thank you so much for being a pillar to us tonight, for being a radical and invaluable part of our re-education on this topic of reinvention. <laughs> thank you for having me. I'm thank sure you for people, being here. I'm sure people are going to keep on going over this replay over and over. They're going to consult this video like a Bible, like a reference yeah. material. I can guarantee uh, so thank you so much for being on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Show. Thank you for your energy, guys. You, you, you know, you always make these things easier. Thank you so much for drawing in, drawing out, for being there, for being present, for participating, for spending your time with me. I do not take that for granted. Thank you, thank you, thank you. J.O., thank you so much for everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, guys, until next time when I come your way on my own channel with Night School. Yeah, we'll talk about that <laughs> off camera. <laughs> and until next time when YBB comes your way on this same channel, you know what it is. What thank is it, guys. really? I guess it's just thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>